I am Gwen Mason, and I'm here today with you at the 108th Annual Conference and Expo for the American Association of Family and Consumer Sciences. And I'm delighted to have Dr. Sarah Newcomb with us. She is a behavioral economist at Morningstar, Inc. And um, we just wanted to have a quick chat. She had a wonderful keynote address today, exciting research. So I guess if you could just start by telling our audience a little bit about the focus of your research. Yeah. So my work focuses on the intersection between psychology and financial decision making. And specifically, I am interested in understanding the elements of psychology that create internal blockers to good oh, okay. financial health. And even more specifically, I want to uncover elements of psychology that are changeable because it doesn't do us any good to understand what personality factors might contribute to good or bad financial health if we can't change those things. So I search for changeable psychological factors that affect financial decisions. That's so important and that can really have a very positive impact on people's lives, I'm sure. So it's great, great work that you're doing. Could you tell us what it means to be financially healthy for you know, your research and background? Yeah, so my most recent work focused on defining financial health okay. in a way that I think is more complete than what the industry generally does. Okay. Normally we focus on the economic elements of financial health, so someone's saving, retirement readiness, their um, habits, their budgeting, and all of that is important, but it leaves out a really critical part, which is how people feel. There are plenty of people who are economically sound, but they're still filled with anxiety. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, they're not financially healthy because the goal of financial health is to be both economically sound and emotionally well. So if you have plenty of money, but no quality of life, because okay. you're filled with anxiety, then you're not uh, achieving what the goal of wealth is. So uh, we, we've created at Morningstar a multi-dimensional definition of financial health that includes both economic factors and emotional factors. Now that sounds, you know, something like our members would be very you know, interested in hearing about. I know that the field of family and consumer sciences is very holistic and integrative, so I know that this will really connect with a lot of people who are watching. Um, could you share a little bit about each of those dimensions yeah, so it's not very complex, really. On the economic side, um, we want good savings habits, we want the ability to withstand economic shocks or unexpected expenses, yeah. uh, retirement readiness, um, the stability over time financially. And what I found in my work um, over the last year is that people who think farther into the future, specifically people who think 10 years or more ahead, are far more likely to have good savings habits and good retirement readiness in terms of their savings balances than okay. people who are thinking just a few years ahead or less. Um, and so one thing that people can do is yeah. think about how far they're really planning. I mean, you may be contributing to a retirement account, but that doesn't mean that you're really thinking ahead. So it's really good to be able to create a clear plan for yourself. What do you want your financial life to look like next year, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20, and all the way toward the end? Well, that sounds very important, and I think a lot of people you know, will hear this and want to start thinking more ahead when they're working with different audiences. They'll incorporate that into their programs and research. Um, and you're also the author of this fabulous book right here, called Loaded Money Psychology and How to Get Ahead Without Leaving Your Values Behind. So I don't know if you could also share just a little bit about the premise of this book that was just yeah. published last year. Yes, right? this came out last year, and this summarizes the first 10 years of my work. Um, I basically took all of the aha moments that I've oh, had right. and I put them the into book form, right? Yeah. Oh, nice. um, yeah. But so the premise of Loaded is the big realization that I've had through the years of doing this work is that when it comes to money management, very little is really about the numbers. Because a certain number will mean one thing to me and something entirely different to someone else. So it's really not about the numbers, it's about the stories that we tell ourselves. And healthy stories lead to healthy strategies. And unhealthy stories can often get in our way. Mm. And the second thing that this book does is it lays out uh, a money management approach 
that mm -hmm. focuses on bringing your feelings of personal power in your financial life inward, which is one of the big factors that I found affects emotional well-being. So when people feel that they are in control of their finances, that they feel that whatever comes their way, they can weather it, when they really have that belief, then regardless of the amount of money they're making, they're feeling a lot more peace, pride, joy, and satisfaction in with respect to their money than people who may earn more but don't feel powerful in their financial life. So this book really combines the sound economic principles with good psychology to be able to build a money management plan that's personalized to you where you're at the center and you're in control and you feel powerful. Um, and the goal with all of this, with all of my work, is really to help people get unstuck. Now that is so important. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing this important research. I hope that people who are watching you know, get your book and, and learn more about you and they'll be on their way to being more financially healthy, which is what we all want. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great rest of the conference. Thank you.